Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video, I'm going to cover D5 positions after the London system or against the London system. So positions where after the move D4 for white, black plays the move D5 and white plays the London system with bishop to F4. These are the most important and the mainline positions and ones you'll encounter most often, I believe. Uh, along with that, uh, the second most popular are the King's Indian positions, which we are going to look at tomorrow. But d4, d5, bishop f4 definitely has the most theory. Now, one thing I would like to mention, also possible on move 2 instead of bishop f4, is the move knight to f3, which is more flexible, gives white more options, but also gives black more options. And black, uh, black can choose a variety of different setups, some of which even avoid the London system. And there are also some move order differences. Now, knight f3 is not a bad move. It used to be the main, mo main move in the London. It still is the main way to enter the London. But bishop f4 is just simpler to play. So we are going to be looking at positions with bishop f4. Let me just give you one example uh, before I get into anything, just to justify the move bishop to f4. For example, if you if you start with d4, d5, knight to f3, there is one way for black to avoid the, the London system, and it's playing the move bishop uh, pawn to c5, I'm sorry. And if white tries to enter the London now with bishop to f4, then simply c takes d4, Taking with the queen runs into knight c6 with tempo. And if you take with the knight, remarkably, the move f6 is very strong. Uh, best move is actually to give up the bishop here with rook takes b8. And now white's best move is e4, which is very counterintuitive. e5, the position gets messy. You can see that it's nothing like the London system. So uh, the move bishop to f4 or move 2 has its advantages. The other advantage is that, well, knight to f3 is not... A London system move, it's not necessary to complete the London system pawn chain, c3, e3, and the bishop on f4. Even though it's very thematic and it's going to be played almost every game, you don't have to play it at start. Okay, the video is going to be divided into two parts. One part is going to be the basics and the other part is going to be the advanced part, in which we are going to be focusing on the main line, which is the move knight to f6, uh, of course, on move 2. And we will reach positions after e3, c5, c3, knight to c6, knight to d2. This is by far the main, 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 main line of d4, d5 London systems. And here we are going to be focusing on bishop f5 and e6, two completely different moves. And we are going to be covering them in detail to show you the attacking plans for white and ideas in the London system. Before I get into that, I'm going to go over everything else black can play. So this is going to be... The basic part of the video where we see what choices uh, what choices can black go for so after the move bishop to f4 as i said knight to f6 is the most natural move black can however avoid all of that with e6 c6 uh, if he can go uh, bishop to f5 uh, there are tons of options he can even go c5 and we will see what to do against each. Let's look at c5 first. This is one of the trickiest moves. So bishop to f4 if black tries to avoid your, your London system with c5, where, well, here you have, have several options. After c5, the main move is, of course, e3. You need to start developing. The difference is here, of course, the knight is not on f3, therefore taking on... Uh, on d4 doesn't have to be done by the knight. If you play knight f3, you have transposed to the weird variation where after cd4, knight d4, black again goes for f6. The difference is after e3, well, you are now ready to recapture with the pawn. And your center is solid, there is no e5, and it's quite simple to play. In this position, black could take c takes d4, and this is one thing that has to be mentioned for, for all London players. This, after c takes d4, e takes d4, is hardly a London system now. It's basically a Carlsbad structure in reverse, in which after knight to c6, c3, uh, black can now go for a minority attack. And this is very similar to the Karo Khan exchange variation. You have basically transposed to the Karo Khan, in which white has already developed his bishop to, uh, to f4. So here bishop f5 is the best move, and I've played this uh, the black side of this a million times. So bishop f5, and now either knight to f3 or queen to b3 immediately. Both are fine. I would recommend the move knight to f3 for white, uh, and now e6. Black basically plays the Karo Khan. 
Queen to b3, queen to d7, you don't have to defend with queen b6 in Karo Khan positions, this is fine. Knight b to d2, knight g to e7, bishop to e2, and your plan is knight to g6, and slightly different to the exchange Karo Khan, but the same Karlsbad pawn structure in reverse. This is as if black were playing the queen's, uh, the white side of the queen's gambit declined uh, exchange variation. So, normal minority plans for black. White, on the other hand, has to be slightly more aggressive. Uh, Castle get his rooks to the e-file, use the e5 square as best as he can, and yeah, just try to try to attack. So that's what happens after e3 and c takes d4. Now most players with black are not going to go into that because it's the, not the most active, but it's a variation you have to be aware of. And if you're a London player and have never played Carlsbad structures, then that could be messy. So have a look at that. Uh, the main line, of course, is knight to c6, and now after c3, knight f6, knight to d2, we are back to the normal main lines, which we are going to have a look at later on. So remember that if c5, you have to play e3, and if cd4, this is going to be a Karokan exchange or a Karlsbad in reverse, but if knight c6, it's a normal position. Now the second move black could go for after d4, d5, bishop f4, which may confuse you, is the move c6. And this move, of course, if, if e3 is played, which you should play, and if uh, black continues with the move bishop to f5, this is fine. I mean, c4 is the best move, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. But as you can see, black is prepared to play queen b6 uh, at some point if you don't do anything, so c4 is the best move. I'd just like to mention that c3 trying to still play the London system is just taking up a square from the knight and very weak. So one thing you have to remember in the in the London system is if black plays c6, you don't play c3. You play c3 if black plays c5. If black plays c6, you play c4. So if black's pawn is on c5, you go c3. If his pawn is on c6, you go c4. That's always like that. Why? Because there isn't enough pressure uh, on the center here. If you just play c3, what do you have? Your knight has to go to d2 for no apparent reason. So in this position, after e6 for black, which is the main move, you play knight c3. And now notice that black is playing the London system in reverse, but you have a more active structure. And your knight is obviously better on c3, your pawn is obviously better on c4, and white is simply better here. Black is playing the London uh, uh, a tempo down. And that doesn't make too much sense. He has to go knight d7. Of course, this is a normal London system for black. So remember that. But most people after c6 are not going to be playing the London system in reverse because that's just bad. After e3, they are going to play the move queen to b6. And this is slightly trickier. Now you don't have your chances anymore. Uh, this, I believe this has a name. I have no idea what the name is. I've once heard somebody refer to this as something but i don't know i couldn't find the name later on here the best defense is queen to c1 obviously if you'd already played c4 or c3 then you'd have the option of queen b3 here you don't and now only bishop f5 so this move queen b6 is very interesting for black you avoid all of that stuff uh, by simply making the queen uh, come to c1 this is now different knight to f3 e6 bishop to e2 you obviously cannot play bishop to d3, what you'd like to do in the normal London, because you'd have to recapture with the pawn. Knight to f6, castles, knight b to d7, again, black is playing the London system in reverse, and white had to concede to his queen being on c1, but again, remember, when the pawn is on c6 for black, you don't go c3, you go c4, and you're going to have a very active position. Bishop to e7, of course, bishop to d6, which black would like to play, is impossible because the queen is on b6. So bishop to e7 and now knight to c3. Very active position for white. You're playing against the London system for black, which is just a bad version because, of course, white has a lead in development and an easy game. So remember that against the move c6 for black, black is going to be the one playing the London system. And that's going to be very important. Remember not to... Don't just follow your knowledge blindly or what you know blindly don't just play e3 c3 automatically play c4 against c6 positions okay now bishop f5 is a very interesting move uh, on move two a move i've played myself it can also be entered from the mainer lines after e3 bishop f5 this is symmetrical uh, and we are going to see a couple of ways to play against that so let's say bishop f5 on move two it's the same thing 
E3 for white is one option. Uh, and this is probably the better move here. Uh, if e6 is played, uh, then knight to f3 and bishop to d6 leads to, well, quite equal positions and very often will transpose to the main lines if black continues with c5. Now knight to f6, c4 for white is quite active. You can go c3, but remember that since neither pawn has been committed yet, you are the one who gets to choose and why have less space. If you go c3, obviously black is going to go c5. If you go c4, black has to go c6, because if he goes c5, he has a bad, weird version of the Tarash in which I don't think his defenses would work. So... In this position after c4, castle, knight to c3, c6, you again have the favorable side of the London system, or black is playing the London system, you are playing uh, the white side with more space. We have transposed because of this bishop on f5 and the pawn on c6. So against bishop to f5, if you want to play e3, remember that you are going to get into the positions where you have to play c4 and have to play against the London system, which black is going to play. Another option after bishop f5, recommended by uh, Grandmaster Simon Williams, uh, who has a lot of experience in the London, is the immediate c4, which I have to admit I'm not a huge fan of, but it's, it's a very aggressive move you could play. So basically, uh, the idea is you try to put pressure on b7, which is the main weakness in, in this position, because the pawn has gone outside of the pawn chain. Of course, e6 should be played. In this position and now white's queen b3 immediately wouldn't be such a good move best is to go knight c3 to try and uh, gain a better edge on the queen side if you go queen to b3 immediately i don't think you're threatening anything in this position well what's the best move for black yeah simply knight to c6 the idea is there's this trick then that if knight to c6 queen takes there's always knight to b5 and in this position it's just not well, knight to b4 i'm sorry I'm playing this from the black side, so I, I usually go to, to b5. So in this position, it's no longer possible to defend c2. So queen to b3 immediately doesn't really threaten anything. The knight is going to get to c6 and it's going to be fine. I actually play this with the black pieces against, against the London. Uh, so against e6, you simply continue with knight to c3. And now it's the London sort of in reverse again. Because now, instead of uh, black being able to put pressure on the b2 pawn, as we are going to be looking uh, at in the main lines, white is able to put pressure on b7. And, of course, knight to f6 can be played. And now that the knight is on c3, of course, knight before knight c2 isn't as dangerous, because at least your rook is not trapped. So we go queen to b3. And the best defense is queen to c8, but we are going to be looking at a couple more. I think b6 is the easiest. Um, all the options, well, are not that good. Bishop d6 is one of the engine main choices, but it's a move I simply don't understand. Bishop takes, queen takes, and after queen takes b7, the engine recommends queen b6, but then realizes that black is virtually lost, because this endgame is simply a pawn up for, for white for no reason. So bishop d6, weird move, don't play it. Uh, knight b to d7 is okay, queen takes b7, rook to b8, and here black is better, but after knight b to d7 you don't have to take, you can just go e3, which is sensible, dc4, bishop c4, and white has a slight edge. So remember that if black plays knight b to d7 you don't take the pawn, because it's kind of scary you're going to lose your b2 pawn. That's a good defense. Queen c8 is also okay. After queen c8 you continue e3, d c4, bishop c4. Normal defense. But b6 I think is the best one because it reinforces c5 and in some positions you're going to enter uh, a Tarash position, I'm, I'm afraid, or something resembling a weird Tartaka where queen's can be declined with the bishop on f4. But it's just easiest to play this. e3, bishop to d6, bishop takes, queen takes, knight f3. Normal position, black's b6 pawn isn't really such a weakness. And this is quite easy to play for both sides. Uh, white should be slightly better, of course. So yeah, uh, c4, again, leads to those positions when you put pressure on b7. But after b6, I don't see a huge problem there. So against bishop f5 setups, I really would recommend e3 playing against... Black's London system. Okay, uh, 
Now let's look at e6. This is kind of weird. Uh, it can transpose to the main lines, of course, but if black plays e6 immediately, there are a few things he can do. If, of course, e3, bishop d6, we are just going to go into main line stuff. This is going to be a normal London system. But one difference is after e6, if you go e3, he could surprise you with the move f5, going into a Dutch or a Stonewall Dutch. Uh, and this is going to be covered in a separate video where we look at uh, how to play the London against the Dutch defense. But yeah, let me just show you that c4, knight f6, knight c3 is perfectly fine for white. Uh, and white has absolutely no issues. C6, c6 is, of course, the main move. And now you're basically playing a, uh, a Stonewall Dutch against the London system as black. Okay. Uh, so those would be the sidelines and now finally let's look at some serious London system stuff. I just like to mention that after the move knight f6 which is the main move uh, and white plays e3 it's possible to go c5 e6 or g6 or bishop f5. Bishop f5 we've just looked at it's the same as playing bishop f5 on move 2 and this is the move I've played for two years. I think it's a good move. Uh, g6 is a move that's going to be covered in Grunfeld type setups in a separate video. This is basically a Grunfeld for black one if he gets his bishop. So this is going to be a separate video. Uh, and e6 transposes to the main lines most often, unless after knight to d2, which is the best move, black goes g6 and, uh, I'm sorry, bishop to d6. And we are going to transpose most likely. If black doesn't play c5, what does he do? So eventually this is going to transpose. So basically, the only move we have to look at is the move c5, which is the most active move. Before I get into that, I would just like to mention one very nice weapon I have against the London system. And that's if white starts with knight to f3. So my move is knight to f6. White plays, of course, bishop to f4, and they play c5. And this is all normal. This is main, main line. And if he goes e3, now the main move is queen to b6. Uh, the main move is knight to c6, but I play the move queen to b6. And I've won, well, I played it in only one tournament game, but I won it convincingly. Uh, the main defense here, and the only really good move is knight to c3. My opponent played b3. You can find that game on the channel. This is just not good after bishop g4. So this is very good for, for black and very tricky. So another reason why you should start with bishop to f4, because if black tries his stuff now, knight to f6, e3, c5, uh, I don't have to play knight to f3. I just go c3, and now queen b6, of course, doesn't do anything. I just go queen b3. Okay, so that's another difference. So we are going to be focusing on the move c5. And after c5, c3, knight c6, knight to d2, we are going to be looking at bishop f5 and e6. And I hope that this part of the video is going to help those of you who are already a bit experienced in the London system. This part of the video is going to be a bit, a bit advanced. Okay, so let's start with the move bishop f5, which is slightly more popular. But, in my opinion, is slightly better for, for black than, than e6, but only slightly, and simply because it avoids all the crazy London system stuff. It may be counterintuitive that the move bishop f5, which weakens b7, and of course after e6 gets, out, uh, gets outside of this pawn chain, is less dangerous, but it is less dangerous, and the move bishop f5 sort of dampens white's play. Okay, and I believe it's a better move. So, okay, bishop to f5, there are two options for, for white. The obvious move, since you've just weakened b7, is queen to b3, and that's the main line. Knight g to f3 is the second uh, move, and here, black is for choice. He can go either e6 or queen to b6. Now, the London system is about these two pawns, the main line of d4, d5, and you can guess that if black plays e6, White is going to play queen b3. If black plays queen to b6, well then white cannot play queen to b3. So let's look at e6 uh, first. Queen to b3. Uh, after queen to b3, black doesn't have to go queen to b6, of course. He can go queen to c8. That's a better move. And now it's about those bishops as well. Neither side has managed to create a square for the bishops. So knight h4. And this, these lines get kind of weird for white and I don't like them so perhaps 
uh, some of you who are playing the white side of the London or are playing the London system have made these mistakes and then they're in this, these positions. After knight to h4, which is basically the most active move and the only good move in these, in these positions, bishop to e4 has to be played. Now, you don't want to take that with the knight because black would get a monster on your e5 square. You play the move f3. Chase the bishop away and now there's simply nothing better than g4. And after the move bishop e7, you can take on g6, which is, I think, best. And after h takes, you can continue h4. So if you are a fan of these positions, sure. Uh, I'm not because the black king is not castled yet. And I don't see uh, the advantage of this attack. The engine thinks this is perfectly equal. So if you are playing the black side of this <clears throat> against the London system, bishop to f5 is a very good move because if white continues naturally with knight g to f3, you can just go e6. You don't have to worry about your your b7 pawn. So just if queen b3, which <clears throat> basically should be the best move because you don't have bishop to d3, which would be a normal developing move. If queen to b3, then simply queen to c8 and black is fine. If white continues with knight h4, bishop e4, and white will either have to give you his equality, uh, give you the equality if he doesn't go knight h4 or well, he will go knight h4. And on the highest levels, most game games end in a draw. On our level, amateur level, and I mean, they end in all sorts of results. I just think that it's hard to play that for white. The other option for white, if not knight h4, is c4, which I think is kind of counterintuitive for many London system players. This is the other move to try to go for the advantage. But of course, c, uh, I'm sorry. But of course, c takes d4. Uh, sort of ruins your London pawn structure and after knight takes d4 you have to go e takes d4 and you will now either have to accept an IQP and black center is stronger you're not playing the London system it gets fairly tricky so uh, after the move knight g to f3 I don't think black should go queen b6 but he can queen b6 is slightly more active in this position, white has the intermezzo knight to h4. He doesn't have to defend immediately, because if queen uh, takes b2, everything is still defended. The rook is not hanging. Uh, so in this position, bishop to d7 has to be played. And you have achieved something. You've chased away the bishop back, and only now queen to b3. And here, this move c4 can be played, queen to c2. And of course, it's important that we don't have this bishop on f5. And now knight to h5, you attack the white bishop, bishop to g3, and knight g3, a g3, g6, trying to restrict this knight. White has given up his bishop pair, but the h file is open, and I believe white is uh, slightly better here. So white should just continue with e4 and blast open the position. He should have a slight edge. So if as black, uh, after you, you meet knight g to f3, after your bishop f5, I would recommend e6 and not queen b6. Queen b6 is slightly harder to play. That being said, after bishop to f5 for white, I wouldn't recommend the move knight g to f3. I just don't think it's good enough. I, I say queen to b3 is the best move. It's simply the most active. Uh, black now defends with queen to d7, of course. And only now you go knight to f3. And it's slightly different. You haven't allowed uh, e6 yet. Queen b6 is not possible. And here you have to play actively. Now, as I said, this is counterintuitive. We have reached a very similar position to what we've already seen. c4. c4 has to be played. You don't have a better move than, uh, than, than c4 as black. You have to do it. And if you do it, you are playing for a slight advantage or an equality if white goes wrong. If you don't play c4, then you are just worse. Well, why is that? Uh, in this position, if you try to go e6, uh, then knight e5 is very scary. Looking at your knight, looking at your queen, of course, you would have to take. And in this position, d takes e5. And now things get scary. If you, if you play c4 now, when white has already achieved everything he wanted, uh, knight c4 is actually possible, and that's quite a scary sacrifice. So d takes c4, you go bishop takes c4, the knight now has to move. Where do you move the knight? What do you do? What do you do in this position? Let's actually turn on the engine. Black castles, but it's only 0.6. If, what if black tries to save the knight? Is there no way to save this knight? Let's say knight h5. Ah, oh, the queen is hanging. Okay. So a very scary position. So in this position, after knight g to f3, well, play the move c4. It's very important that you chase the queen away first. 
Now if 95 uh, is played, then it's slightly different. If, uh, if knight to d5, uh, yeah, okay, you can just take and then take the queen, so it's it's not a big issue. So c4 forces things. If you go c4, the queen is going to have to retreat to d1, and you have gained some space. You go e6 now, and it's a normal position. Now, white should remember one thing here. In this position, you really hold no edge unless you can break it open. And black is going to have equality and a very boring equality unless you do something. The position, of course, should continue with you developing first, playing bishop e2 and castles. But after that, when you castle, uh, black will try to exchange these bishops. In this position, playing bishop to g3 simply ruins your pawn structure. And actually, since all of your pawns are on dark squares and all of black's pawns are on light squares, getting rid of that bishop is a good idea. This is black's best piece. Takes queen takes. Black simply doesn't have another option. Bishop d6 is the most active move. And now knight h4 is the best move and played most often. But what you have to remember, knight h4 doesn't really matter that much. You can exchange that bishop off. Not important. You have to remember that you either have to play b3 or e4 or you are going to be worse with less space. So knight h4 is a logical move. Simply grabbing that bishop what black should actually castle. Uh, grabbing that bishop, now it's kind of scary to take it here because now e4 is not happening. But if white obliges and retreats, black obliges and retreats, then this is this is a great position. You are hanging on h2, but you can defend that with either knight f3 or simply even g3, I think should be fine. So the point is you need to get counterplay with these two pawn breaks. So how did we reach this position? Let's go back. So we are looking at bishop f5 in the main line. And we are looking at the move queen to b3. And we are now looking at queen to d7, knight g to f3, c4 for black. Otherwise, if you don't play c4, if you play something normal, knight e5 is going to be deadly. You need to do this counterintuitive move. I know it's counterintuitive to play c4 both for white and for black. Because as black, you are sort of making e4 much easier. And as white, when you play c4, you are not playing the London system. But get over that. c4 for black, best move, only move. If knight g2 f3, then e6, knight e5, deadly. So c4, queen d1, e6, bishop e2. And now, from white's perspective, look for pawn breaks. This is very boring and very equal. Black has more space. If you don't do anything, black is simply going to do this and, and you're going to lose. He's going to have a passed pawn on the queen side and you are over. So you have to either play e4 or b3 to be equal or better. I say to be equal because I really believe it's easier to play black here. So that's the move bishop f5, a very interesting move for black and I think the main move for a reason. Now let's look at the more interesting e6. e6 leads to very sharp positions. Now the advantage of e6 over f5 is of course you are not undefending b7. The disadvantage is, well, white can use the d3 square and white can use the c2 square for his queen. White has stronger light squares. You, of course, don't have enough control over e4. It's easier for white to play e4, and that's where the, all the variations stem from. Now, we branch out on move 8 for black. Until then, all the moves have to be played. Knight g to f3, bishop to d6. White, of course, here retreats the bishop. You want to open up the h file if possible. You would love black to take. Black is never going to take castles and now bishop to d3 this is the normal 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 very usual most usual london system setup for white and the bishop on d3 the knight on d2 other knight on f3 and the bishop either on f4 or g3 what's important here is that you haven't castled yet and that's that could be quite important in many variations so remember that the reason why I don't want to castle is because you are not giving away your cards yet. And very often in the London system, there is going to be a kingside attack coming uh, towards the black king. So here we are going to look at three moves for black. b6, queen e7, rook e8. All three are different. All three are very scary. Okay, uh, now let's look at rook to e8 first. This is the sideline. Uh, okay. Just give me a second. Okay, after rook to e8, knight to e5 should be played. 
let's discuss the two main ideas uh, with y for white. One idea is the move e4, breaking open the center, as we said in the previous position. It applies here as well, and e4 is going to be played in some positions, knight e5 is going to be played in other. Uh, most often, when uh, the piece has been developed to the e-file, so either queen e7 or rook to e8, as we are going to see, uh, you simply continue with knight to e5. So remember that in this position, which is going to happen every time black plays d5, if you would follow the main line to move 8, which you are, after bishop to d3, if black puts a piece on the e-file, you jump in with knight e5. Rook e8, knight e5. If queen e7, again knight e5, as we are going to see. You are not afraid of captures. Why is that? Well, the best move in this position is actually to take the knight. Uh, and let's see why. Well, bishop takes is the best move because your bishop is kind of useless with the knight blocking the diagonal. The reason why white is not afraid of captures is d takes. And what you do with d takes and knight d7 is you are getting rid of the main defender of the black king. And now these positions can be very scary. Note that f4 is very often a mistake. Uh, in this position, I think f4 is just a bit too loose. As you can see, black is equal. I mean, f4 is a tricky move which you would like to play, and it's probably more active and giving you better winning chances, but knight f3 should be more solid, something like knight f8 and castles. Again, even if you're not going for a crazy attack, this is torn in black's position. Very hard to play with this pawn on e5. But from a practical perspective, if I'm white here, I'm playing f4 and and just trying to checkmate. The idea is, of course, getting my queen some, somewhere close to f3, castling queenside and, and checkmating. Okay, uh, now, the other move, queen to e7, again, knight to e5, uh, knight to d7 uh, is the main response because black has to fight for the e5 square. If black doesn't fight, fight for e5, the idea here is of course just to take with a pawn. Uh, and if white plays the move f4, then f6 is coming. So fighting for the e5 square, if black doesn't do that, then he's just worse. If he leaves the knight on f6, then white is excellent. Here I'm going to show you a trap in this position, which you need to look out for. So white, of course, plays knight takes d7. There's nothing better in this position. And you can take with the bishop, you can take with the queen. Uh, taking with the queen is slightly better. And in this position, if d takes c5, which is the main move, you play bishop takes c5 and black is fine. White continues with knight to f3. Again, looking at the e5 square, he can castle either side. The black king is slightly unsafe because, of course, there's no knight on f6, so h7 is tender. There are some Greek gift ideas uh, sometimes, but they don't work. Basically, here, white is going to have to continue development, and maybe after knight f3, black should be careful about bishop h7, uh, king h7, knight g5 check, king g3, and queen to g4, but very hard to do all of that with these pieces in the diagonal. But if after knight takes d7, uh, white, uh, I'm sorry, black takes with the bishop, which is a more active move, there is a neat trap which you need to be aware of, which starts after bishop takes d6, queen takes d6, and now d takes c5. The idea is, of course, that uh, if the queen takes, there are going to be Greek gifts on the on the black king. So remember that if you have this position on the board, you don't take the pawn. What happens if you take? Well, if you want, you can pause the video here and find it. It's not an easy tactic. It's not easy to see this, but once you see it, you are going to remember it forever. So bishop takes h7, king takes h7, queen h5 check, and now the point is after king to g8, you have this very, very good move, knight to e4, forking the queen and the checkmate, of course. So if the queen moves, then simply knight g5 is an unstoppable checkmate threat. The only way to save the position and not get checkmated and not lose the queen is to go g6, and now simply knight c5 wins a piece back, so takes and takes. In this position, of course, white is much, much better. Uh, black has six pawns, white has seven pawns, but his position is completely busted. And I don't know what the evaluation is. Yeah, plus three. Okay, so that's the best black can do, and this is basically busted. So remember that trap. Of course, after 
After the move d takes c5, you just retreat the queen, and it should be slightly better for white, but nothing major. Bishop to e2, knight to e7, b4. You have this extra pawn, but it's going, going to be very hard to keep it, and black should be fine with his huge center. So the move queen e7, uh, well, the main alternative to the main line, which is b6. Now let's look at b6. b6 is the best move, and against b6, uh, the setups with knight e5 are not uh, the main options. There are uh, three moves. Uh, I think queen to e2 is the most popular, then knight e5, then e4. I think e4 is the most active way to play against b6, but all three are perfectly fine. In fact, let's look at knight e5 here first, which is the sideline. Against knight e5, well, you played b6, you go bishop e7. And here... Uh, there are going to be very crazy lines. So, if you play the London system, this is probably one of the most interesting ways to play. So, most people against b6, bishop b7 will expect e4 or queen to e2 reinforcing e4. But you can confuse them with this. Knight e5, bishop b7, the idea is to move f4, which in this position, when you still haven't committed your king anywhere, and you have a bishop on d3, which is very important for this attack, this can get wild. So, of course, taking any way but with the bishop loses a piece, so we don't take. Uh, knight to e7 is the best move for black, and now you continue with queen to f3. Now pieces are lining up for an attack. This is going to get scary. Uh, so the best move and the idea behind knight to e7 is to go knight to f5. At least try to get rid of this bishop and, well, defend the diagonal. But now bishop to f2. And you can see what's coming. I mean, you can see what's coming. Bishop to e7 is the best move. And now, if you want to play like a coward, castle, which doesn't make too much sense here, it should be the best move objectively, but ah, g4. And these are some of the most interesting London system positions. So here, if you have experience with this, uh, I think the, the best way to learn these positions is to play them against a friend or against yourself or against the engine if you don't, don't have anybody. Uh, the way to develop attacking ideas here is to practice and afterwards analyze the games with your opponents, with, with your friends. And trust me, you're going to find some very interesting lines. Now, one of my best chess friends plays the London system. Uh, and we've played this, these positions several times uh, for his chess training. Since I played the black side of the London system a lot, uh, and I avoid the main lines, it was interesting to see if black has any chances. But I'll leave you here to uh, to try and assess these positions yourself. This this has been played before. It's very interesting. I don't think any human being would like to be uh, black in this position. And this is extremely easy to reach. This is why I avoid the main lines of the London as black. So, against the move b6, Continue with knight to e5. There's simply nothing more logical than bishop to b7. And after f4, it's already quite tricky. Black is the one who can go wrong easily. This is very hard to play. So remember these lines. Don't castle play g4. Now the other option black has, uh, white has after b6 is the move queen to e2, which is the main line. Queen e2 simply reinforces e4. It's less aggressive than knight e5. Again, bishop to b7, rook to d1. This is a more positional approach. Rook to e8, and now e4, breaking open the center, fine, normal move. You can still go knight e5, but e4 is more precise. Bishop to e7, stepping away from e5, and you go e5, black goes knight h5, this position is fine, there is no way, of course, to, to save the bishop, so he's going to trade stuff off, and let's say white castles, takes, takes. Normal, peaceful position, white has a bit more space, but the attack is not coming anytime soon. So queen e2, positional. e4, the immediate e4 is the, well, in my opinion, the best move. Uh, the immediate e4 can either be met with bishop to e7, again, running away from e5, or taking. If they take, you take with the knight, and an exchange is almost forced, um, because, well, black doesn't want to give up his bishop. Or be the first one to trade here to open up the h file. So knight e4. Knight e4 and now bishop to b7. d takes c5. Bishop takes c5. Now the main move here is queen to a4. Avoiding a queen trade. But queen a4, rook c8, rook d1, queen e7. Yeah, I mean kind of meek positions compared to the, compared to the knight e5 lines. 
although they are the best. And in this position, why do I say e4 is best for white? Uh, because you have a very easy game. Both sides have a very active bishop pair, and that's couldn't be more true. You have this nice annoying pin on the bishop, which has now just been defended with queen e7. And of course the queen indirectly defends the a7. But white has the e5 square to work with in the attack, whereas black doesn't really have any useful squares when the, once the knights get traded off. And more importantly, white has a 3 to 2 pawn majority. So if you want to go positional with the London system, this is a great way to play. I believe playing e4 on move 9 is one of the best ways to play positionally. I wanted to show you one more thing, and I just want to make sure that I haven't forgotten. There was something important which I may have forgotten. Hmm, I don't remember now. I don't remember what I wanted to show you. I hope I will find it. Ah! I found it. Good. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. So we are looking at uh, the positions where uh, the black bishop is on f5. And black continues with c6. Now, here is one thing. This is what you should know against uh, the, the lines with bishop f5. This is very important. Because I've played this with black for two years. And this is very important. I did not know about this. You need to be aware of this resource. So the normal move right is queen to b3, trying to attack the pawn. The normal response, of course, by black is queen to b6, and we are used to this. And how do we continue with white? We continue with c5. Now, of course, if queen takes queen, we take with the a pawn, and we have that b pawn attack. If the queen retreats, well, it's just... Ah, you, you can't defend the pawn, of course, because the bishop is sitting on f4. If the queen goes to a6, then e4. I'm sorry, e4, and game over for black. So queen takes queen is forced. a takes queen. And now... We are used as black, I, I played this position with black, you are used probably in the London system to just play b4, b5 and win. Here's the trick. Knight d7 by black, the most natural move, b4. And in this position, if you go e3, I'm sorry, uh, a6 by black, in this position if you go e3 or something else, then rook c8, rook d8, unpinning and you don't have b5, the, the trick with the pin. Let me just show for those of you who don't know, if you go b5 immediately, then pawn takes, knight takes is possible because the, the rook is hanging. But after a6, if you go e3, as I said, the rook moves, you don't have b5. If you go b5, uh, if you go b5, there is a move for black that saves the position. And this I found out maybe half a year ago, and I was really excited when I found this. It's so obvious. And probably everybody knows it. Let me know if this is new for you. But there's this very good move e5. And e5 attacks the bishop. You don't have anything anything here. I mean, what do you do here? e5 is an extremely nice resource. It, this position, this exact position, has never been played before. I don't know if other people know this. I expect they do. But I found this when I was preparing against the London system. And... This, I think, is a great move. Now, what's the point? Well, if you take, I take bishop takes c5. And what, where's your play? You can take here, fine. I mean, but my bishop is a monster. You don't have a center anymore. I'm going to have a passed pawn, most likely. And if you take with the bishop, then I just take your bishop. D takes and bishop takes c5. Again, perfect position for black. This pawn is useless. So against the move e5, I don't know what to, what to recommend. Um, the engine wants to take on e5 and black is slightly better. So this quick queen b3 and this horrible pawn attack, which I faced a million times. I, I in fact, against one of my best chess friends, lost this the first time we played the tournament game. You can find it in the Road to GM playlist. It's called Queenside Annihilation, when, where he crushed me with the London system. I played bishop f5. Yeah, this is the last thing I wanted to show you. Uh, sorry if the video was too long. I hope I managed to cover most ideas in D4, D5 London. 
Uh, let me know if I've uh, skipped something. I'm going to try to include it in the other videos. One more thing that I would like to mention, one thing that uh, we are going to look at, have a look at in a separate video is after d4, d5, bishop f4, the move knight to c6, which is of course also possible. But this is a Chigorin type setup for black and I'm going to make a whole separate video on Chigorin setups against the London. So it's going to be there. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.